Hello, everybody. This is Life Hansen from Spark Interaction, and we have Paul Jackson and Andy Rich today. We have a smaller group today. Um, I had forgot to press record on the last activity we did, but the activity, um, the focus of the day today is about how to create meaningful connection, particularly as we are today on a focus on doing applied improv online. What kind of games can you do when you're in an online space that create meaningful connection. So the first one was a very simple one, kind of something you would do in a, a warm up, sort of a icebreaker connector type activity. And it's a substitute for the typical, how are you doing type question. And the question is, what's it like being you right now? And the coaching that you'd wanna offer people is to emphasize their senses, their sensations, their feelings, um, and maybe thoughts that are coming, but a short version of it. Um, as improvisation is about becoming in the moment, we're not wanting people to check in with like, oh, this just happened, or I'm thinking about the future, but really, what's it like being you right now? And so when we did that, for example, I was sharing some of the things that I was seeing in my environment. I was sharing some of my feelings, that I was feeling joy about connecting with some of my peers and friends. Um, I was, I was connecting about some of the sensations going on in my body, some tenseness in my belly, things like that. And, um, and, and we found, I, I liked how Paul reflected that there was a strange thing with the online aspect that you start to sort of feel connected to your world, the other person's world, but also sort of this strange flat, I call it flat land. Um, you know, you're sort of in the flat land world and looking at yourself and everybody else. And it's kind of an interesting, it's an interesting thing. So that's what we're gonna talk about now is sort of what some of our experiences were from doing that. If one of you wants to start, how was that for creating meaningful connection? How was that activity for you? Shall I go? Uh, it seems to me to be a really good example of an online activity that stands a good prospect of creating meaningful connection. Uh, I felt connected meaningfully <laughs> with both of you. <laughs> so it, it, in that test, it works in a way that a lot of ap application of improvisation activities online really don't work for me. They seem like very poor second rate substitutes for what they're like in a room. This one, because perhaps of those extra dimensions that you mentioned, has a lot of texture to it and mm. still allows for the meaningfulness of a conversation without anything artificially gimmicky getting in the way yes. whilst acknowledging that the technology is there and is, is part of the experience. Nice. Thanks. How about you, Andy? <clears throat> well, I found it again, interesting just because you, we were asking a question that was much more different than we normally would. The typical, how are you doing leads into a lot of extrinsic things in terms of, projects you're working on and things like that. So in this activity, A, it really forces you to quiet down and really take a moment to notice what's happening within yourself and your surroundings and start thinking about the impact there. Uh, it was good having somebody else, in this case yourself, doing it first that, because to set an example. Because uh, I, think, I think if I, just starting out, you're, you're gonna kind of be swayed. And then the feedback he gave me to actually stop myself and take a moment to notice my surroundings was helpful. Just a reminder to breathe was very, very helpful. I think that was pretty interesting. Um, so, so I like that. I think it's, I'm gonna try, try that in our next meetings that we do. I, as I was thinking as what could also possibly also be done, maybe, again, maybe not in a huge group, is if I'm looking into your room Perhaps there, and something connects me to it. For example, I'm looking to my left, your right. I, I see that hat on the mannequin. Perhaps part of this might be is to ask a simple question as that, this, that hat draws me, so makes me thinking, when do you wear that hat? And then that would then cause you maybe to share something else that will then draw further connection. It might be another thing that we could also do as I'm thinking. But uh, wow. I, I, I'm, I'm surprised, I'm really, I'm surprised by the activity. Um, as you're sitting here and you start think, listening to the request, you're like, oh, this is gonna be very touchy-feely. And then as you really allow that to break away 
and become part of the 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 experience, you start to really see that you know what it really breaks down some barriers. And from now, from here, I can see how we could get into more detailed discussion as to whatever else that we're doing. Love it. I love that idea. Matter of fact, I, I, I maybe even would suggest at some point we try and play with something around noticing what's in the other people's boxes, because that's, that's the material right. you have to work with in an online space. So I love it. Um, we'll come back to that. Uh, one piece I'll add, I you know, feel the same as you guys about the activity. Um, I think a really hot topic right now, thanks Renee Brown and, and others, is vulnerability and, um, and the connection that vulnerability creates. And so when I'm, I made a couple vulnerable choices to share some of my feelings, you know, um, and I think if, if we encourage each other in the what's it like to be you right now and remind each other, and like you said, Andy, kind of model this at first, to actually go into that emotional space, you know, like, um, you know, I'm feeling some shame about this, or I'm feeling uh, a little insecure because I don't know people or whatever the feeling might be. I think that's a really beautiful way to create meaningful connection also. And, and it does it. I experienced that as you guys shared some of, you know, your, your feelings as well. Great. I'm glad that one worked. Um, how about, uh, well, do we want to play with the thing that Andy just said and try and sort of <clears throat> almost maybe create a game out of that? It could just be something like, I, um, how about, I have an idea unless one of you guys are already ready to go. Okay, so, right for, so mine would be the prompt I'm curious about. Um, or it could be, I notice and I'm curious about. Now you don't actually ask the question yet. You don't go into a conversation but um, you just say, you just kind of brainstorm uh, and in a popcorn style, that's that prompt. So I might say, um, I noticed a, uh, a young lady in your room, Paul, leaving. What? And, How dare you? <laughs> and I'm curious, I'm curious who she was. Now you don't answer it. We just kind of keep continuing. You just leave it there. There's a libelous suggestion for the world <laughs> to leave it there watch forever in the recording call. By the way, <laughs> by the way, that was his secretary. <laughs> so you think? <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. So let's try that for a little while. Um, I notice, and it's and I'm, I'm curious. I'm loving this game. <laughs> and uh, just popcorn. I notice, and I'm curious without responding. I notice there are tons of books in your background, Paul, and I'm curious how many you've actually read. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I don't have to so just, just popcorn. And also, now that as I got a good look at Paul's area, I also noticed I saw the books as well, and then I saw the file system on the back of his door. Uh, and I see a lot of information there, and I'm curious as to how he keeps all that information organized. Mm. But explain the secretary. <laughs> <laughs> I notice a. Str oh, it went out of view. It went. Keep it there. <laughs> I notice uh, some sort of creature on your, something on your couch, Andy, that looks like a, to me, like a stuffed owl. <laughs> and I'm curious what it is. Uh -huh. No answering. I, I right. noticed similarly stuffed objects on your uh, wardrobe or cupboard that is just in the corner of the screen now because you adjusted the angle. So it's even harder to make out what they are. And I'm curious yeah. as to what they may represent. <laughs> I noticed a sentence that I probably could read were it not for the placing of your head that says, meet me at um, above the window. And I'm curious the rest of the sentence. Oh, yeah. Jordan Gates. Yeah, yeah. same here. <laughs> um, I'm noticing again the hat um, and the series of hats now that I'm looking 
uh, further. And I'm wondering, is that part of a collection? And do you actually wear those hats? I'm noticing a bottle of what I imagine is olive oil. And I'm curious about the quality of your cooking. <laughs> <laughs> I notice a circular thing. Oh, it might be a clock, I, a clock or a drum behind Paul's um, uh, at the top. I think it is a clock. Yes, now it's moving. And I'm, I'm clock. curious to the time in London. Mm. Mm. I notice a circular thing on Andy's wall that doesn't seem to be a clock. I'm curious as to what that might be. It's reminding me of a wreath, yes. Yes, yes. Uh, it's causing me curiosity as to, wow, how much influence my wife has in decorating our home. <laughs> uh, I would, as I get back and I, again, really drawn into all of the books in Paul's room, I'm curious to how many of those are nonfiction and business related and how many of those are more for uh, just indulgent joy. Mm. Yes, I'm curious about that too. I noticed the closed drawers behind Paul on the the cabinet, and I'm curious how many dead bodies are in there. <laughs> so I like this uh, leaf. And I like this too. I think there could be a <laughs> limit to the number of observations, and yeah. that there should yeah. be a round of responses. Ah, yeah. let's or do it. Permission for a round of responses, anyway. Yeah, how about um, in, in, in timing these things would be would be really good, obviously. I think because we know we only have three, there's sort of a feeling of a lot more uh, yes. ease around the timing. So we'll just keep it going for now. But let's say- you, uh, you, I've, I've, got a, I've got a question or a suggestion, I suppose. So perhaps maybe even a next step with this would be as I sit and I look to um, the clock on Paul's wall, and, and I'm curious about it, would it make sense for me now to say, to talk about something that connects, connects me to it as to what was it that, um, that made me look at it? So now I'm seeing the wall, I see the clock on the cabinet there. And now that's making me think, wow, we've been talking for quite a while. This has been pretty an intriguing conversation. And maybe then the next step is I can even then pull something from my home that maybe kind of relates to it. For example, I'm now re grabbing my cup of soda and I'm realizing that I've, I've, it's almost all gone. I don't, you know what I mean? Just as another way to bring about and make these connections. I love it. Yeah. And, and particularly with the theme of meaningful connection, it yes. really does then. I mean, there's the connection because you're saying it connects to me and makes me curious, but I love the yes ending of like, yeah. Let, let's let, let's try a little bit of that. Like we can new ones or the ones we've already said. Um, let's I'm, do the, uh, I would suggest doing the response round first while that's on people's minds. And then it allows uh, the subconscious to work and come up with the, what's the connection that we're prompted by or that we now feel that we've established. Would that be okay? okay? Sure. Certainly. Uh, so I'm going to clear up some <laughs> rumors. You better. <laughs> that, uh, that was my assistant, Emily, who walked across and left the room. I think a better question than how many of these books have I read would be how many of these books have I written? Ah. Uh, they in this room. They're all non-fiction, this being the office. So a lot of business books and books about arts, stories, leadership, and all that kind of thing. Uh, there's fiction downstairs. But you could Are you say not going to answer how many you've written? Most of this is fiction as well. Uh, six. Nice. Written or oh, co-written. Wow. Co uh, yeah. And it's a clock. <laughs> <laughs> Those, those are my responses. No dead bodies. And what yeah. is in what is in the cabinet? Uh, this one. Stationery. 
Aha. I do think I saw a couple body parts though, but I'm Maybe. not gonna. Yeah. <laughs> um, I will say that the hats, so two are hats, one is a helmet. So one's a scooter helmet that I occasionally wear on my scooter. And yes, I do very occasionally wear the other couple hats, particularly if I'm in an environment where there's gonna be many people like Paul who will be making comments about my hair. Um, <laughs> so, so anywhere in the world? Yeah, well, I do. I, I, there was a there was a training that I did uh, in the Midwest where I was like, "Oh crap, this is not going to be a good idea to have some purple hair going." So I went and bought a hat, and, when, and it was one of those ones. Um, let's see the question about the oil. It is olive oil, and it's uh, Riohana extra virgin olive oil, so pretty good oil. But I'm not a great cook because I'm living on my own for the first time in my 49 mm -hmm. years for the last two months. So I'm learning that. Well, that was totally presumptuous because I could have been cooking at home. But my ex was the primary cook. Um, I don't know if I got other questions in my area. Did I? No, those are the two main ones. Yeah, yeah it's okay. not to satisfy our questions. It's to allow you to respond to whatever you were uh. hearing in that. Got it. It's how I would conceptualize this yeah. round in this wonderful new game that Andy has proposed. <laughs> so I guess uh, the big question for me was what was on the back wall to meet me at the garden gate. Uh, <clears throat> my wife, uh, again, this is, I'm in outside of the solarium, if you will, or it's just, a, it's just a room with a lot of bright light. Normally I'm working in my basement, but um, I, I find when I'm doing anything video wise down there, it's very, very dark. So um, I, we're, you're not, this, this is a room where I have some influence, but not a lot. So it's really more about my wife where I'm positioned. Um, <clears throat> then yeah, you're, you get the, it's very, very garden themed in here. The stuffed owl is actually my dog's blanket. <laughs> she, um, <laughs> she just recently before the call, I don't know if you can see her there, um, but she, uh, moved to her sun spot, but before she was lying on that, when, whenever, my, um, whenever I leave in the morning or my wife leaves and she's, she sleeps on the top of that couch like a cat, my wife always covers her up with the blanket because um, she feels that she will prefer it. And then usually 15 minutes later, my dog gets out of it. That's kind of what was happening there on that end of it. I think those are the, the main questions that were asked. Nice. I have a logistical question. So if we're, if you're doing this in a meeting, I mean, so this does take, it, it is a time commitment. So if you have a meeting of, let's say five to seven people on the phone, would you use a timer and keep, I, because then all of a sudden you're, if you have the pressure of a timer that may take away some of the, um, the authenticity of the activity, I'm sure. What what would be your thoughts in there to uh, you know, be able to work work in, in a little efficiently, but still getting this accomplished? So what I would recommend doing, and the, the tricky part is the the order, um, because um, because we all see a different order of faces on our screen. But I, this this is what how I would probably do it if I were to try it again. Is um, it would be simple observations and it would but it would go let, let's say you did have a circle it would just it would go actually each person would take a turn and mm -hmm. um, but otherwise since you don't know what order to go in the understanding would be sort of a popcorn style but basically like each mm -hmm. person go once um, when it what I'm liking what I would how I would try this next time is the phrase would be I'm noticing blank and I'm curious about blank and it reminds me of blank from my life. And then, and then when it comes to the round that we just did, I would use a timer. I would say each person now has one minute or two minutes to say whatever you want in response to the questions that you got about your space. Oh, that's so that's good. how I do it. Any, any well, other I will let you know because I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to, I have a, uh, I have a web meeting next week and I'm going to, I'm going to, it's a smaller group, small group. It'll be 
five people. I, I will, I'll try, I'll give it a try and I'll let you know how it goes, where we got oh. stuck and what went. Awesome. Great game. Thank you, yeah. Leith and Andy and yeah. me for developing that. That's a yeah. wonderful <laughs> example of co-creating a, a new activity. That yes, I think that we need to give Andy the honor of giving it a name. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> what's that behind you? What's that behind you? Excellent. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. We created yeah. What's That Behind Thank You? you. Uh, high five back at you. <laughs> um, I've made notes of the whole of that, which... Thank you. Um, ...will arrive as the Zoom chat for AIM and could be in some way given to Amy to accompany the video that goes onto YouTube. Yes, I will do that. And I'll also uh, repost the video in the notes in the uh, group. Um, Paul, do you have perchance a final activity that you would like to try out? Or I think you maybe said just describe, if you have one, we could try that'd be great. But if you have one, you'd just like to describe that's a meaningful connection one, that's fine too. Uh, yeah, I'm only going to describe it because uh, one, I need to leave the call in a couple of minutes and sure. two, you may well already have done it. But I think it's in the same category of connecting people and that it can also work online without loss of its characteristics and qualities that it has offline, uh, which is the story of your name, mm -hmm. um, which pr produced over an hour of really interesting discussions in a group of six participants in a storytelling workshop that I ran yesterday. Um, most people didn't know that, did not know that activity beforehand, were not familiar with improvisation, and invited people to share the story of their name. Mm. And there's many ways that it's possible to do that. So the choices people make are indicative of how much or how little they want to reveal, of what they think is significant, and in, in the storytelling workshop, which that one was, it's a story everyone can tell. Everyone has some story of their name. And it starts showing whatever you want about structuring stories. So I did a part two later in the day of coming back to it and letting people use some structuring ideas to rethink a story of their name and pick maybe three beats of how it developed over time or how their emotions changed or something of that sort. And that, that was simple and effective. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, I think that's a, a very simple one. And I, like you said, it's great because everybody has a name. Um, you know, it, it's a great one for me right now because I, as I think at least Paul knows, you know, I've, I've changed the pronunciation of my name back to the actual Danish pronunciation from leaf to life. I'm fine when people call me leaf. Um, so I kind of think of myself as, as both names, but it, it provides that opportunity for me to kind of, you know, tell some of that. And it definitely has a story beyond just the Danish pronunciation. So cool. Um, excellent. So Paul, you were just saying you need to get going. I think we got a, a really nice, good, you know, three activities today. Um, um, is there any final comments anyone wants to check out with? I really appreciate uh, the invite to doing this. Uh, it, again, it met my curiosity. I'm hoping to do more, more with you guys. Um, and again, I, I really appreciate the invite. Excellent. You're welcome. And I, I appreciate you joining and looking forward yeah. to the next one too. Yeah. Good, good to meet you, Andy. And great to see you again yeah. live. <laughs> you too. Take care, Paul. Take care, life. All right. See you guys. Receive care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.